Right, right stripping down the RS today, um, already started getting parts off it. I uh, want to get the gearbox out, put a new crash box in it. Drop the anti-roll bar, TCA's drive shafts are out. Let's get moving. So here's the gearbox for the RS. It's the Quaif box we've got. Stage two, shot pin gears. See the Quaif diff in there. And also, quick rack, using the touring cars. So it's the 2.78 rack. So it's 2.78 turns lock to lock. So that's a really short rack. New track control arms. Get that in while the gear, gearbox is out and the engine's out. Put new poly bushes on it. Getting the gear linkage off of the bottom of the box. All the fuel lines, swap lines are off. Little CVH is worst, worst case easy, out. easy to get out. We're going to leave it all on so that we can uh, just whip the gearbox off, check the clutch over, and clean up the engine bay. Give the uh, gearbox a quick paint up, weld up that sa chassis leg section, and uh, we're good to go. problem we had to take the turbo off you wouldn't believe that a uh, little CVH engine wouldn't even fit inside a big old engine bay like that but a few bits we need to move down the back should be about time to get her out now so you go comparison between the two Got uh, proper tie rods on the end this time, not ones that look like uh, they was found in Poundland. With uh, <laughs> what were they, 15 mil nuts on them? Got proper chunky tie rods. So the standard rack was uh, 3.6 lock to lock, and the new one is now 2.78 lock to lock. You can see it's got rebuilt Quaif internals, the same that they use on the touring cars on the S1s. Uh, should give a much more positive feel. New gaiters, new clips. Should feel a lot better. Right. So the other thing is, well, look how knackered these inner ball joints were. So if you've got your car and you check, you take your tie rods off and they flop around like that, they normally got play in the ball joints. So replace the inner arms. You can see how stiff these ones are. No movement. So they're brand new arms there. So engine's out now. Start to get dark. Going to whip the gearbox off. Gonna get that one that's painted. We uh, stuck the quick rack in already, just got that centralized. So we're gonna go over the engine bay now, degrease it all down, get it looking nice. Gonna replace these brake lines because they're terrible. Um, they was done before, uh, never been replaced. So we're gonna replace them. Give the engine bay a general tidy up. So this is the Quaif gearbox. We're gonna uh, give it a quick sand down, a quick paint up. 
that's the one that's coming off here. That's an LSD box as well. If anyone needs a Series 2 gearbox for LSD, drop me a message. So I've gone over the whole engine, give it a thorough degrease. It's come up nice, uh, nice and clean. As I say, I ain't done many miles the car. Went over the whole engine bay. See the paint works pretty good still. Obviously gonna do these brake lines, get rid of them now, cause uh, they've ever done them, done a terrible job and they look horrible. And we've deleted the ABS. So we've changed this cylinder and this reservoir for non ABS one. And painted up the gearbox, even though it was clean anyway, give it a fresh coat of paint. So now we're just going to bolt it on. Went over and checked the clutch, had that off. Clutch is good. See the paddle clutch in there, loads of meat left on it. So we're good to go, let's get it back in. So obviously we're going to be upgrading the power on the car, we're putting a new turbo on it. Obviously we're putting on that new gearbox, so we're going to be running a lot more um, shock through the transmission system when we're launching it, Santa Pod, stuff like that. We're going to put trip weights on the front, try and get some decent times. And we can't be dealing with these stock mounts. Now, these mounts are brand new. Um, these are Ford mounts, and you can see the play that's in them. So, at the same time, while the gearbox was off, it was a no brainer to obviously upgrade to Vibrotechnics mounts. So, we've got a pair of Vibrotechnics solid mounts. They've got a little bit of rubber, so they've got, still got a little bit of play or polyurethane, should I say. Um, but yeah, you can see, look at the amount of twist and flex you're gonna get from the stock mount and I'll show you a comparison between that and the solid mount. So now this is the mount with the uh, solid fiber techniques mount bolted in, literally no play at all. I mean, you can yank on that, you can hear everything moving about and you just literally cannot move it. There's no play in it at all. So although it's gonna be a little bit more vibration through the cockpit, it's a small price to pay for a much, much more direct and uh, better feel through the transmission, better uh, clutch take up. So you ain't got a, a load of vibration when you're coming on the clutch because with these paddle clutches, they just like to rip mounts apart. So it's a massive upgrade to do to the CVHs, especially because they've got the cross member um, as opposed to the Series 1, which doesn't have a cross member. So obviously when you're removing your gearbox on these cars, they're so cheap, always re replace these release bearings. Uh, one little thing is, some of these release bearings on the, the cheaper kits, are uh, they come with these plastic brackets. These here, this is plastic. What happens is, as soon as you put any pressure, especially on a um, paddle clutch or something with a, a bit of strength in the cover plate, these just snap and they break off and then you've got to pull your gearbox back off. So always make sure you put a nice, either genuine one or at least it's got a metal casing. On all our cars now, don't matter if it's an RS Cosworth, RS Turbo, Astra GSI, we always use these Aero Crip nuts. These we was using about 10, 15 years ago, but they were really expensive back then. It was like two pound a nut. The price has come down massively over the years. So they're a lot better than these uh, copper ones that come. Don't get me wrong, there's not much wrong with them, but these ones never come undone, even with heat. Um, I've never had one come undone yet, uh, even when I've had the manifold literally see-through. So well worth upgrading. Right, so we've managed to get the engine back in. Um, we've bolted the turbo back on as well, because we put the engine in without the turbo on, just makes it a lot easier. We've upgraded the nuts to the Aero Quip nuts. The reason being, we couldn't get the, so we managed to get a lot done. We uh, managed to get the engine back in. We got it in without the turbo on, the way we took it out, because it was a lot easier, a lot more clearance. This uh, slam panel gets in the way. We've also put the aero quick nuts on and a uh, new gasket. We've knocked up some brake lines, go down the back of the bulkhead, a lot better than the ones that are on there. Uh, we're gonna change them for a Kunafa uh, brake lines in the future, because the copper's a bit soft and you can't get the right shape to them. So I'm just going to start bolting stuff on, putting on the hoses. So you can see here why it's apart, where I've hidden all the engine loom. So basically this is a Cosworth engine loom. 
that has been modified to fit this engine. Obviously, it's running the same ECU, the Cosworth L8 ECU with a Pectel board, etc. And um, so I hid that in the heater box. So when the heater box is on, you don't even see the engine loom. So there she is, all finally back together. So just going to give you a quick look around the engine bay. I haven't put no coolant in the system yet. I've just um, primed up the fuel system for leaks. So we've got no leaks. Obviously, you've got the fuel pressure gauge down the back there. You can see the nice, fresh Quaife gearbox. One of the main reasons we've done all this work, just to get that in there. So we'll be able to handle the power now. So this engine shouldn't have to come back out for a long time. Hopefully, you see the Vibertechnics engine mounts down there, the solid ones. So that's gonna stop that moving around on the cradle now. That's all you want, because uh, you can see how close these pulleys sit to the chassis leg. There's uh, only about five or six mil clearance there. So you can see the engine loom's all been tucked away. We've got the full roofs, ancillary, and water pipes. We've got them all round now. The main one here is this one that goes to the thermostat housing. These always split. If you have an RS turbo, you always get one split on this bend, normally on the motorway, which uh, leaves you stranded. So we've got the ignition leads, the Ford Motorsport ignition leads that have been converted to coil pack ends because they're normally on the dizzy. Obviously we've got green injectors, three mile back sensor. The engine's fully forged, big valve, ported head. Um, we think the back going is solid lifted so we can up the rev limit. At the minute we've just got a uh, Cosworth 4x4 T3 turbo, uh, dash 31 actuator. Uh, what we're doing is we're upgrading to a T34 which I'm picking up tomorrow and then we can up the boost a little bit and hopefully get to the mid mid 200s to so maybe high 200s, 260, 270. Um, it's gonna take a few more modifications to do that. Probably bigger injectors, but hopefully we can get there. We've got an LA ECU, so it's well capable of it. Uh, we've got Pectel board. So obviously now we've got the, the quick rack in there, 2.75 quick rack, you see earlier. So we're good to go. So this uh, should be back together now, and it's, we're just gonna give the engine bag a tidy up, clean everything up and uh, get her ready for mapping, get ready for uh, back on the road. So I'm gonna do some driving vids, obviously dyno vids, get some sand clips. So thanks for watching this one and I'll get on with the rest of the project and we'll see you next time.